Hi, I'm Brian with the HVAC School Podcast and HVACRSchool.com, making this video today in conjunction with True Tech Tools uh, about the Testo 420 flow hood. So I'm going to go over some basic steps for using a flow hood in general and then some features of the 420. This is a photo of the 420 right here. I've got one right behind me. I'm going to show you how we set that up. First thing to know about the 420 is it's extremely light. It's just over six pounds. It's got a great price point. It's got a really large tiltable display. And actually, it's a removable uh, manometer that you can actually use to take pitot tube measurements if you wanted to uh, use that for taking pitot tube measurements as well. It also, the Testo 420 also connects to a Bluetooth app so that you can use that to take all of the readings in a particular space and format them into a report, which is another nice thing. So you can use it for taking spot to spot readings. You can also use it to make a larger report for an entire structure. So let me show you how this works. All right, so this is the Testo 420. We've got the, uh, we've got the flow straighteners right here. And you can see them a little bit better as I open it up. You can see the flow straighteners. That helps make sure that when the airflow is coming into the flow hood, that it straightens it out and doesn't have a lot of turbulence because anything that happens with the airflow where it goes in and bounces off the walls, uh, it doesn't hit the uh, pitot array down at the bottom straight, that can affect your reading. So I'm gonna show you real quickly how to put this together. It's really, really easy. They have these dashed lines in here that show you where you want to assemble the poles. So what, what you do is you just pull it out straight, put the poles in. There's little receivers in here that go inside the poles. Like that. There now you can see that it's all assembled and the flow straighteners have straightened right out. Nice and easy. So this is the large display. It's a really, really nice, easy to read display. It tilts up and down. Turn it on, you just hit the power button. In order to take a reading, you just hit this red button here and then that holds the reading in the display. So if I were to hit it, it would hold. Obviously, there was no, no reading because there's no air flowing. But when I take a re measurement, I just hit that. It says hold. And then when I'm ready to take my next reading, I just release it. And now it's reading again. So there's always some air flowing in a space like this. So it's not surprising that you'll get some small readings. One thing you will notice with this flow hood and with most flow hoods is that they do have a minimum and maximum range. This flow hood is going to read accurately down to 50 CFM, plus or minus. And so if you have very, very small vents, say a bathroom vent in a small bathroom that's producing 30 CFM, it's going to be difficult to measure it with this. I would go ahead and use a vein anemometer in order to read instead of using the flow hood in an application with very low flow. Um, but the fact that this goes to over 2000 CFM means that in most applications, this is going to be a great option. Now you can use a flow hood for a couple different things. You can use it in order to measure all of your diffusers, then add them up to get total system airflow. You can also use it to compare against a set of plans. So if you have some specs or plans that show you what your design CFM output is, you can use that for test and balancing. Even in residential applications, it's a really good idea. Obviously every diffuser, every register has a designed CFM output. And so by going and taking those readings and doing some balancing, adjusting your balancing dampers, you're gonna get a much better result. I understand that that's not a very common thing in most residences, but it really is a good idea. And then obviously commercial test and balance is a little bit more complicated, a longer process, but the Testo 420 supports all of those purposes. This guy back here, this guy right here, this is Sean. He is uh, our estimator, salesman, extraordinaire. What, what, what do you like to be called? Um, handsome. So this is the Testo 420 flow hood in its case. It comes in a nice case. It's called a flow straightener. And so the flow straightener, what it does is is it captures the airflow as it comes in and it helps to straighten it out so you don't get turbulence going down the sides. It's one of the kind of unique features about the 420 and it is proven to make it more accurate. Because a lot of guys think, well, flow hood, a flow hood's gonna give you an accurate reading no matter what. But actually, it won't necessarily because as the air goes in, especially if the air is directional, it'll bounce around, it'll create eddy currents, and really where everything reads is down here at the bottom in this pitot tube array. So down in the bottom of every uh, every flow hood, there's a pitot tube array, and that's actually where the reading takes place. When you initially set up the device, you, you go into, well, we'll go back to the beginning here. You go to display, and then you're going to want to set your uh, volume flow to CFM, 
your differential pressure to inches of water column, your temperature to Fahrenheit. So just sitting here in the room, because there is some flow in the room, you, you may read a few CFMs here and there, and that's to be expected, and it'll change a little bit from room to room, which, you know, you do need some velocity of flow for it to read accurately, and that's true of any device. There's a threshold of where it will read accurately and where it will not read accurately. Um, with this device, you really kind of need to get it over 50 CFM for it, to, for it to give you an accurate read. Let's go ahead and put it into... Let's go ahead and put it into Bluetooth mode. You just hold on up, hold down this up button, and you see the little Bluetooth icon is flashing now. So now we can connect to the application. Go to find device. There we go. So we have this device to connect to. We are now connected to the device in single measurement mode. And you can see these small changes and inches of water column are what provide us our CFM reading. And this I can go through and actually check, I can actually see the trends of the readings. I can read a table of all the readings at different intervals. As you can see here, you go into header configuration in settings and you can set up all your company information. You can add a logo, all that kind of thing. You can even import a contact if you want to import a contact for the customer and then that will go into your flow report because you can actually create a report either on the device or on the app. If you look on the device here, this is where you would go in and create the report so you can, you can read one at a time your different measurements. All right, so we've got an Ecobee thermostat here and you know there's a couple different options when you're testing airflow. Um, what you, really the best way to do it is to put the system into high stage cool so that that way you're, you're running your maximum airflow in, in most cases, whatever setting is your maximum airflow. So I've got it in test mode here and then disconnect the condenser so that that way your air density isn't going to be affected by the changes in temperature over time. So I've put it in high stage cool. I'm going to go out to the condenser and pull the disconnect. So the first thing about the about the Testo is that it's really, really light. I mean, it's lighter than, it's pretty much industry leading as far as weight. Um, and the other nice thing is it's got these swivel handles, which is nice when you're transferring from this position to kind of this position if, you, if you're reading something that's far overhead. Uh, you really should be able to do 10 foot ceilings without a ladder with this, which is a, which is a nice feature. So we're reading 117 CFM in this configuration. Let's see what we read if we change the configuration. We've got 103, 104, 106, this direction. And then hundred and four, hundred and three, the other direction. So you always have to give it a couple seconds to let it sit in. All right, so I've taken it out of Bluetooth mode so that I can use the actual button on the on the device. So we got 98 CFM. I'm going to hit the button. That holds it. Once I hold it, then I can take it down and read it, assuming, and then break my customer's house. And then I hit the report button here. And then it says save that value. I hit OK. And now that saves that value into that report. So that's how I go one at a time through Put it up, hit the button that holds it. Then you hit the you hit this uh, document button. It asks you if you want to save it. You save it in the report, and then you can keep going. And then later on, when you connect to the app, then you can pull up the full report. That's probably the most practical way of doing it. So now we're going to go to the next event. And again, each time I'm going to check it at a couple different configurations just to see if turning it 90 degrees changes the reading. If it does change the reading, then we need to kind of think about the exact position of the vent, try it a couple different ways, and maybe even average. So let's say I'm getting a significantly different reading in this configuration and this configuration. Well, then I might measure it the other direction as well and then see, then average out the, the readings in order to figure out what the best position is, what the best reading is. Hey, Juan, you don't mind if I knock the popcorn all off your ceiling all over the place, do you? Uh, you know what? It's something we had on our to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Very agreeable. Juan is a very agreeable customer. So the other nice thing is you don't necessarily have to see it as long as you hold it up there for five seconds. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, 
five, and then I hold the hit the button, which I can't find now because I didn't have my hand in the right place. So now I hit the button that holds it. So 99 CFM, and it's not currently on hold. All right, so now I'm turning it into another configuration just to check. Hold it again. Now you can see we're reading 99 or 98 CFM. So we're reading 98. We were, we were reading 99 before, so we feel pretty good about that reading. 99, 98 is a good reading, so we're going to now go ahead and hit the document button. It's going to ask us if we want to save the value. We hit OK, and now it's saved in the report. So now we're ready to keep going. We're going to go ahead and lock that one in right there. So 48 CFM is a pretty good average of what we were doing. So now I'm going to take this out of here so I don't knock it over any of Juan's priceless paintings. See, the bad thing with this flow hood is that I'm not really getting a workout. And that's why I like my old Almor. It's just a lot heavier and I feel like I'm really working on my biceps. This thing just doesn't give me the, the oomph I'm looking for. Alright, so we're reading 80... 79 in that range. Okay, so first we gotta hit the up button so that the Bluetooth comes on. And the device shows up. Actually, that this feature works pretty nice. It actually shows up pretty easy. Now, once it connects, then I'm going to go into the, the uh, memory. We're going to select this folder, and these are all of the these are all of the readings. So, what I can do is I select all of the readings that I took. They're all selected, and now I have a rep report that I can that I can configure. I can go in and edit it. I can add images. I can add comments for every particular reading. It has a place for I can sign it. I can print it. I can do all that kind of thing you see here. Um, I can edit the customer's information. Um, it's a really really nice report if you wanted to do like a full balance report. For me, I'm just using it to keep track of the different readings that I took, so I can do the math because some of the um, some of the events I wasn't I wasn't able to get on with the flow hood anyway. So I'm going to have to use a vein anemometer for those. All right. So in order to further demonstrate this, we're going to use this to take our measurement on a commercial supply register. I got my technician Mike here, manager, manager Mike. Any, any, okay, any time now. We can probably, yeah. All right, I'll figure it out just, from here. Uh, just put good notes in the call. All right. That's it. What do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> just waiting. You, you ready now? Yeah, now I'm ready. Okay. All right, good. What's your commentary on the weight? It's light. <laughs> Very how, light. How, how, how much would you guess that it weighs? If I had to guess what this weighs, I'd say. <clears throat> 8.5 pounds. Wrong. Just over six. <clears throat> Pretty close. Yeah. <clears throat> I would think as a fisherman you would know this kind of thing. <clears throat> Alright, so as he places that over, we're gonna show it on the app. So now we're going to hit play. Alright, so just hit play so that way we're actively reading. What does it say on the screen? Can you see it? 179, 182. 182. And you can see it reading the same thing here. So if we want to log this reading, we just hit pause. So now that reading is locked in, then we go here, and that saves the reading. And now we can take our next reading and uh, add it all to the report. Pretty easy. Was that easy, Mike? Very easy. Good. Thank you. That's it. I'm Brian Orr, Testo 420 Flow Hood. You can buy the Testo 420 Flow Hood or find out more information by going to truetechtools.com. That's T-R-U-techtools.com, all one word. If you'd like to find some more videos, you can do that here. And if you're interested in purchasing the Testo 420, here's a link for that. Thank you for watching.